Last time on Dragon Ball, Kakarot has been sent to planet Earth to escape his planet's sure demise. As fate would have it, he is found by a kind old man, Gohan. The martial artist begins to raise the child as his own. However, at the same time, Gohan's old master and friend, Roshi, has begun to set into motion a plan to get rid of an enemy from old. What could the Turtle Hermit be planning? The fate of the world is decided now. Rebirth of Evil. What if King Piccolo raised Goku? Master Roshi stands in front of Korin, the Cat Sage. He has earned the right to drink from the Divine Water. However, Korin warns him that he might still not be strong enough. You see, Roshi has been wanting to rid the universe from King Piccolo once and for all. He thinks that with this new power-up, he will be able to finally kill the monster if he is ever liberated from the urn that he is strapped inside. Roshi drinks the water, and he feels a huge rush of power throughout him. He began to get cocky, thinking that there's no way Piccolo could ever beat him now. In fact, he would beat him right now. Koran tried to stop him, but Roshi began to head towards where the urn was located. He was going to free Piccolo and kill him right then and there. Piccolo is freed from his slumber, and he looks down at Roshi. He barely recognizes him, but he can tell he is one of Mutaito's students. He feels this incredible power, but laughs. A battle begins between the two old men, but to Roshi's surprise, he is being overpowered until he's finally defeated. Piccolo doesn't kill him, he simply lets him suffer from his injuries. He then laughs and flies off. Roshi regrets everything he had just done and passed out. Not long after, Piccolo begins to create his minions. In one of them, hears a rumor that there's a monster on Mount Poutsu, a giant devil that terrorizes a mountain for one night. Piccolo takes interest in this and decides to check it out. He takes his minions up to the mountain, where they found a young kid crying over the body of an old man. Piccolo is about to kill the kid when he realizes that he's got a tail. He finds this curious and throws him over to Tambourine, wanting him to examine the child. The child is very rowdy and strong for a mere human. Tambourine and Piano are tasked with taking care of him, and although they treat him like trash at first, he slowly starts to grow on them as he picks up their mannerisms. One day, Piccolo takes the child down to the city. It is nighttime, and a full moon shines bright. This makes the child transform into an Ozaru, and Piccolo realizes that he really is the devil from the story. Piccolo is able to knock out the Ozaru before he damages any of his own troops but he smirks as the whole city had been destroyed. This was perfect, and Piccolo could use him as a weapon. Every month, Piccolo would send out the kid under a full moon to terrorize the earth. The kid, being so young, slowly forgot about his grandpa, Gohan, and instead began to see Piccolo as his family. He thought he could take care of him, as he didn't remember anything after the Ozaru attacks. Piccolo ended up making the child one of the honorary members of the demons renaming the child as Suona. However, I'll keep calling him Goku. Piccolo gets a strange affection for the child, training him to become as strong as possible, even tasking him and his minions with collecting the Dragon Balls. Along the way, they are confronted by the Red Ribbon Army, at first because they only wanted the Dragon Balls as well. But once it became clear that Piccolo would be a huge threat to Earth, they ended up trying to defend the planet they wished to conquer. They turned all their resources into battling their forces. However, it seemed useless, as the demons and Goku are so powerful. Even the upgraded battle androids like Number 8 fall to Goku. The real challenge came in Tao Pai Pai, who killed quite a few of Goku's allies. Even Goku got close to death, but was saved by Piccolo, who killed Tao. He looked down upon Goku, telling him that they must train more. Piccolo would throw Goku at the demons, where he would be savagely beaten. Though Piccolo doesn't like doing it, he realizes that Goku slowly began to grow stronger and stronger, until he was able to defeat them. Goku began to become very shaded and cold, understanding that Piccolo was doing this simply to make him stronger. The attacks by the Red Ribbon Army continued, but this time they were accompanied by various martial artists. Roshi, Krillin, Tenshin, Han, Chaozu, and the Crane Hermit all set their differences aside to defeat Piccolo. They obtained the final Dragon Ball and were sure to keep it away from their enemies. The armies clashed in a fierce battle. Even their strongest fighters such as Tenshin Han fell by Piccolo's might. Most were simply taken down by the minions. Goku battled Krillin and somehow Krillin felt as if Goku wasn't all that bad. He could have at least been better. Goku on the other hand saw Krillin as nothing more than an enemy. Roshi even tried to trap Piccolo inside the Mafuba once again but was killed by Goku's Masen in the middle of doing it. Piccolo smiles proudly at Goku. Even a reborn Tao Pai Pai was there and was defeated. 
It was all lost, and the demons were victorious. Piccolo summons the dragon and wishes for eternal youth. As the Dragon Balls scatter away, a figure appears. He curses the world for being too late. He then places the bottle on the floor. Ah, Kami, you didn't have to come. Would have gone up there myself. Without saying a word, Kami attempted to use the Mafuba on Piccolo. God hadn't planned on intervening yet, until he watched Roshi use the Mafuba and fail. This time he was ready, as he first knocked down Goku and the other demons. The Mafuba seemed to be working, until somehow Piccolo reversed the attack, causing Kami himself to be trapped inside the bottle. This was the perfect situation to be in, as Kami would be alive, but out of Piccolo's way. He then swallowed the bottle. With Kami gone, Piccolo and his army were nearly unstoppable. Piccolo smirked and told everyone to get on the ship. At the lookout, Popa was saddened by Kami's death. When suddenly, the shadow of Piccolo's ship engulfed the lookout. Popo fought some demons off, but couldn't stand up against Goku. In the end, Popo died. But now, Piccolo was free to explore the lookout. He did so gladly, discovering plenty of rooms which he had a vague memory of. In particular, the room of spirit and time. He decided that his children could use it to train, but he go in first. Goku almost couldn't handle it, but at the very least, he had another person to be around. Plus, Piccolo forced him into that training. Once they got out, they were significantly stronger. The rest of the demons went in to train as well. Time passed, and training continued. Every now and then, they would get attacked by a rogue martial artist or a beta android. This only made them stronger. That was until Raditz arrives. He quickly finds out about the lookout, and tells Goku all about his backstory. He congratulates him on killing a lot of the population, but it should be completely gone by now, even his green friends. Goku refuses to join, and the battle begins. Although Raditz is stronger than all of them, the demon forces have a much greater number. Raditz just can't keep up. To crowd control, Raditz uses a double Sunday around him. This was going to hit Goku directly, but Piccolo jumps in the way at the last second. Goku's anger burns bright as he sees Piccolo's last action, spitting out a final egg. Avenge me, my sons. As he passes away. Hey kids, don't go away. We'll be right back. And now back to our show. Goku's aura burst open, and he fired a huge Masenko that instantly knocked out Raditz on impact. Tambourine was saddened by his father's death, but looked over at Goku who spat at Raditz's corpse. Tambourine mentioned how the Dragon Balls could be used to revive Piccolo. Goku simply shook his head. He had a new mission now. As he stepped towards the egg that Piccolo sped out, he named him Piccolo Jr. He vowed to raise them just like King Piccolo had. Then, he hears Raditz talk. He hadn't died just yet. He warns Goku and the rest that two more Saiyans are on the way, much more powerful than himself. Goku then breaks Raditz's neck. They return to the lookout, where Goku explains that the Dragon Balls are now useless. But the Saiyans don't know that. They will probably come looking for them. They now needed to get ready for the Saiyans' arrival. They had lost too many, and now Goku needed to race Piccolo Jr. They entered the time chamber in pairs. Piccolo Jr. grew abnormally fast. So much so, that by the time the Saiyans arrived, he already looked to be in his late teens. He was a fierce force, and his relationship with Goku made them both stronger than any of the previous enemies or friends. Add to that, Goku had already been training to control his Ozaru form, and just about had it. The day arrived for the Saiyans to attack, and the demon army was ready. Vegeta and Nappa asked for the Dragon Balls, but Goku tells them that they aren't even useful anymore. Not like it matters, because they will avenge their father regardless. The battle starts, and five Cybermen take on the strongest demon underlings. Tambourine was far above them at this point, with Drum not too far behind. Meanwhile, Piccolo and Goku rush to Nappa, with their power around 3000, but they can get stronger. With their powers combined, Piccolo and Goku were able to bring Nappa to his knees. Vegeta was severely disappointed by Nappa, and killed him without hesitation. Goku smirked, saying that he made a huge mistake. He'll need the support. The battle began, and this time all the demons rushed at Vegeta at once. Vegeta exploded his key, pushing them off, and began to clash fists with Goku. Goku was obviously weaker, but he pushed his body to the very limit. Goku and Vegeta clashed beams. The Gallic Gun versus the Masenko. Vegeta is about to beat him, when Piccolo, Tambourine, Drum, and a handful of other demons began to blast Vegeta from the back. This caused Vegeta to not be able to hold the beam, distracting him, and getting consumed by the blast. He was still alive but had had enough. Vegeta threw up an artificial moon and became an Ozaru. Goku smirked 
letting his tail out and transforming into an Ozaru himself. Vegeta was surprised as he didn't know Goku still had his tail. He was more powerful and was sure that Kakarot would go just crazy. However, Goku began to speak and tell the demons to aim for Vegeta's tail. Suddenly, Piccolo Jr. himself transformed into a giant Namekian. Vegeta laughed, telling them that after he is done with them, he will go to Namek and take their Dragon Balls. Piccolo didn't comment and just began the fight. The battle was intense, but Vegeta was stronger than the pair. Thankfully, Piccolo and Goku were very good at fighting in sync. However, Vegeta managed to kill Goku by blasting him with a mouth beam into Goku's own mouth. Piccolo rushed at Vegeta, tearing his tail off right then and there. The demons gather around Goku's body, not realizing that Vegeta was getting away in a space pod. Piccolo told everyone that they would defeat the monster, as he knows where they will go next. Namek. Meanwhile, Goku finds himself in Hell, where he is greeted by the servants of Enma Daiosama. Hell is strange, but he finds the bloody pond rather peaceful. Suddenly, he hears a deep voice of a monster. He heads that way and sees a huge demon. Next to him is a smaller but still tall being, King Piccolo. Goku approaches him with a smile. Piccolo scolds him for having died after he sacrificed himself for him. He then introduces him to the demon next to him, Dabara. He had been visiting Hell. Dabara proclaims himself as the Demon King, but Goku laughs. He says that the only real Demon King is King Piccolo, Piccolo smirks, and Dabara raises an eyebrow. Oh really, will you be the one to defend his honor? Goku cracked his knuckles, challenging Dabara. The demon liked Goku's spunkness. Alright then, show me what you've got. Unknown to Goku, Piccolo Jr. was ready to embark on a journey to his native planet, Namek, in hopes to bring back both his father and Goku. New challenges await them. But this video is pretty long enough as it is, so part 2 will come soon, I've had a lot of fun making this one. So be sure to share, comment and subscribe. Be sure to join the Smug Squad by clicking the bell icon to get notified when I upload new videos. The Dragon Ball question of the week this week is if you could be any race in Dragon Ball, which one would you be and why? Be sure to comment down below and you may appear in the next video. Anyways, until we meet again. See ya! Hey, it's Piccolo. Planet Namek will be a long trip, but the humans at Capsule Corp served us well by providing a modified ship. Brothers, together we will take down Vegeta and bring back King Piccolo. What's this? An even more powerful being is heading there? We must train harder. Next time on Dragon Ball Z, Demonic Rebirth, What If Piccolo Raised Goku, Part 2. Don't miss it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to Smugstick, unless you want to be destroyed. Lord Beerus, that's hardly fair. But also, don't forget to click the bell icon to get notified when he uploads new videos.